by your love. There are no words good enough to thank you. There are no words to express my praise. But I will lift up my voice and sing from my heart with all of my strength. To the Lamb, Alleluia, Alleluia, by the blood of Christ we stand. Every tongue, every tribe, every people, every land, giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb of God. stand by grace in your presence we're cleansed by the blood of the lamb we are your children called by your name humbly we bow and we pray release your power to work in us and through us till we are changed to be more like you then all the nations will see your glory reveal and worship you hallelujah 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 to the lamb hallelujah by the blood of Christ we stand Every tongue, every tribe, every people, every land Giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb of God Every tribe, every people, every land, giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb of God, giving praise unto the Lamb of God, giving praise unto the Lamb. No, not one, no, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one, no, not one. It was 
was there a gift like the Savior given? No, not one, no, not one. I've never seen him refuse a sinner. No, not one, no, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend, I tell you, there's not a friend. My brother, there's not a friend. No, not one, I tell you, no, not one. Church this morning. 
We are so honored that you're here with us today to worship the Lord. And that's exactly what we've came and assembled together to do, to worship the Lord, for He's worthy, isn't He? And it's so good to see each one. What a great and beautiful morning it is uh, to come and be in the house of God this morning. And I've been so encouraged already on the campus this morning with our class. And uh, I, we're, we're working hard, even at my age, at 37, to invest in the next generation. And I uh, had one of our young men teach for uh, my Sunday school class this morning, did a phenomenal job, and then walked in here this morning, and it's so good to see uh, returning families back with us from our uh, Friend and Family Sunday. Thank you for being back. It's one, to ha- one thing to have first-time visitors, uh, but it's quite another when they return. And it's so good to see you back with us this morning. Great spirit, great crowd, and to God be the glory. Let's pray together uh, for God's blessings this morning upon our service. And uh, I'll tell you what, let's do this. We did this some time ago, and let's do it again. Uh, I would like to have all of our men come around the altar. And, of course, you don't have to uh, if you don't want to. And, uh, but I would encourage our men that are able and that would like to, even in the choir, to come down and to pray for the service and God's blessings upon the service. I believe this with all my heart, that if you seek the Lord, God will bless. And so let's uh, come together. As the men are coming, I want to uh, give you several different prayer requests. Uh, continue to pray for Charles Poteet. It's good to see Miss Vicky this morning. Continue to pray for Charles, though, and uh, that God would continue to help him with his cancer treatments. Miss Dot Adams, it is so good to see her, and you pray for her, and uh, she'll be taking cancer treat- treatments again soon. And so really pray for her with that. And then also I want you to pray for Brady Davis, uh, that God would continue to help him there. Chad Allen, continue to pray for him. The Moore family, I want to encourage you to pray for the Moore family of course, that funeral is uh, tomorrow at 12 o'clock. The viewing is from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock. We'll try to have uh, the you know, we'll have our service as usual, choir and all of that. Nothing changes with our service, but our our um, uh, the viewing for Kenny Moore will be 6 to 8 tonight at Gentry, Gentry Funeral Service uh, there in East Bend. And um, if, if you can, I want to encourage you to go by if you, if you get a minute, if it's not too far from your home, to go by there. But then the service tomorrow at 12. And then someone had asked me if, if we would not to let Brady know. Of course, this is his brother-in-law, and Brady is not doing well. So some of the family had requested that uh, we not give him that information at, at this time. Uh, and then also we have several others I'll get tonight. But let's pray for the touch of God, the power of God upon the service. We can do nothing apart from him. Amen. And you can have large crowds, you can have uh, uh, just, uh, just uh, you can have entertainment, but that's not what we're after. We're after the Lord, amen? And so let's pray that God will bless in a very special way. Lynn, let's pray together. Father, we love you. Thank you so much for allowing us to be together once again this Sunday morning. Father, there's no other place I'd rather be. And we're grateful for the men and, Father, the women, the children, and the ministries here at Temple Baptist Church really going on all over the campus this morning. Father, we pray for those who are hurting today in the hospital. And, uh, Father, those who are in have mourned because of the loss of a loved one. And, Father, we ask you comfort and give grace and strength to those who uh, need you this morning. And, Father, I pray for a special touch of your power upon the service this morning. Father, we want you to move in our hearts. We want to be challenged and strengthened and helped today. And uh, we don't want to just go through the motions, Father. We want to, uh, to give us revival in our hearts. And, Father, as we think about revival, and that, Father, next Sunday morning and how uh, Dr. Cottle will be with us, I pray that you would bless that tremendously for your honor and your glory, that you would be exalted and magnified, that our hearts would be drawn closer to you through that, uh, through that situation, uh, through that meeting. And I pray, Father, that you are blessed today, this week, in a tremendous way. We give you all the glory and the honor and praise and thanksgiving for what you're doing in this ministry. We ask that you continue to bless it in every way, and we'll trust you for great things. We love you this morning, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you can be seated this morning, and as our men are going back to their seats, uh, I want to mention this. If you're here for the very first time, we want to thank you for being a part of what we believe is the greatest church in the world. And if you have received a visitor packet, I want to encourage you to look inside there. 
Find the visitor card, fill that out if you would, with the pen provided there. Place that in the offering plate when it comes by. We'd love to have record of you being here with us this morning. Choir's going to sing for us. I know God will use them to be a blessing as they sing this morning. I'm just like the choir. I need the Lord every moment of my life. Let's all stand together once again, all of the building this morning. We're going to sing out with all of our hearts unto the Lord along with the choir, this great hymn of the faith. Give it all you've got as we sing together. It's so sweet to trust in Jesus. Jesus, how I trust Him, how I pray. 
do that third verse together. Yes, tis sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease, just from Jesus and standing if you will let's sing together just a chorus god is so good let's sing that together church let's sing together god is so good, isn't he? And let's remain standing and let's pray over the offering that God would bless it and use it in a very special way. And uh, I want to thank you for your giving. And this is a very giving church. And I am so grateful to be a part of that. And uh, you say, Pastor, well, you're the pastor. You probably don't give and you probably don't tithe and all of that. No, you're wrong. And uh, I, I tithe and give the missions and building fund. And I'm not saying that uh, to pin a rose on my lapel. I would never tell you what I did give and so forth, but I want you to know that uh, I think sometimes people have this idea where well, the pastor gets paid, so he's not going to tithe by the church, and that's where you're wrong because tithing is a very spiritual thing, and uh, I want to make sure my heart is in tune with the Lord and, and right with the Lord, and my, my heart is in the ministry here, and so, yeah, it's kind of like, yeah, you, you, you give, and then you, and you get, you, Pastor, the church pays you, so why would you do that? Because I want my heart to be involved in the ministry. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also, and so I want to thank you for your giving. Let's continue to be faithful in that department this morning. You can also give online, templebaptistchurch.info. A lot of folks are doing that now. And we're grateful for whatever way in which you choose to give. But let's pray. Ushers, you come forward at this time. And uh, we want to pray over the offering that God would bless it and use it mightily for your, uh, his honor and glory. Joe Eskridge, would you come up here and, uh, and pray for us? Joe looks pretty this morning. He just caught my eye. And uh, <laughs> now I'm just kidding. I'm pick- I love this guy. And his wife is teaching in our, one, in our children's church. And we, you don't need to comment now on this, okay? And uh, but we, <laughs> we love Joe and Miss Sharon so very much. You pray for us over the offering, if you will, please. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day. It's the day, Lord, that you've made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We've worshipped you this morning in song, and we're about to hear the word of God presented to us. And, Lord, now we worship you with our tithes and offerings. Pray, Lord, that you would just bless the giver and as we receive it, and it would be given to your glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
satisfied every time I call his name I know I'll find him just the same if you've gone out on a limb or your way it may seem dim don't give up and don't give in casting all your care upon him every need supplied every moment satisfied every time I call his name I know I'll find him just the same if you've gone out on a limb or your way it may seem dim don't give up and don't give in casting all your care upon him casting all your care upon him what a blessing that was i want you to take your bibles this morning please turn with us to ephesians chapter 5 ephesians chapter number 5 and again, thank you so much for being with us once again. We've left out, we put in about 50 or 60 extra chairs uh, for last Sunday. We've left them in, so we need to work hard at filling those up. Let's try that one more time. Most of you are looking at your Bible and you didn't see me. Uh, we need to work hard at filling those up. There we go. And Easter is just right around the corner, April 9th. And I would love to have 250, 300 and, uh, on the campus that day. And so let's pray that God would bless, give a lot of fruit, and I want to encourage you to invite folks as well. I have a card to read to you real quick. Thank you, church family, for the beautiful flowers, food, and cards, most of all, for your prayers. Please keep us in your prayers. March, 33rd, March 23rd, I, I have to go to see if there's something to replace what I had before, and it's referring to chemotherapy there. God has been so good. I ask his will be done, and I've been able to keep in touch uh, church, my dear friend, Allen Andrews, has sent me a bulletin every week, and appreciate what Miss Allen Andrews does. She takes that upon herself. I've never asked her to do that, and she sends all of our shut-ins bulletins. We appreciate that, and loveinchrist.adam. So we appreciate Miss uh, Dot and Bob being able to be with us this morning. It's so good to see them. And then also, one other thing I need to do is I need to recognize Brandy and Jared. All right, would you, we're not, uh, listen, I'm not going to ask you to come up here. I'm just going to ask you to stand. Will that be okay? Can you guys stand? So Brandy and Jared have announced publicly that they are expecting. Let's give them a hand. And, uh, all right. Y'all can be seated, and uh, we appreciate them so very much. All right. And we just announced, if you're here Wednesday night for our midweek service, we just announced one of our other families are expecting as well. And uh, you say, how many ladies are expecting around here? I don't know. I've lost count. I'll be honest. I, I don't know. And uh, just uh, about every other lady, I think, around here. But anyway, we're grateful for uh, God's blessings. My, my sister uh, just gave birth about 6.30 this morning to her second boy and a nine pounds and something. And so we're grateful there and haven't even been able to see him yet. We'll get by the hospital, Lord willing, and uh, if they let us in there. That's kind of my second home away from home is Forsyth Memorial Hospital or what do they call it now? I know the place. And, uh, but, uh, but anyway, we'll get by there and see them. And, uh, and we're grateful for them. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5, as you're turning there, and I want to remind you about our new members class. This will be the last night of our new members class. We have several families lined up to join the church April 2nd. And so two weeks, you won't want to miss that. It's going to be a very exciting day. And, uh, but our new members class this is our last class at 5 o'clock in the activity center. And to keep that in mind, if you will, uh, choir practice today. Don't forget about that choir. And then our spring revival. Don't forget about that next Sunday. Uh, next Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. If you're not involved in an adult Bible class, I want to encourage you to get involved in one of those. And our adult Bible class meets at 10 o'clock, different places through the campus. will be a, a combined adult class in here at 10 o'clock uh, with Dr. Cottle. And uh, he'll be a blessing to you, I know. And them preaching a morning service and evening service next Sunday. I'm looking forward to getting fed uh, from the Word of God, uh, from this dear man of God. And you will be blessed. His wife, they're just sweet, precious people, and they'll be with us Monday through Wednesday, each night, 7 o'clock. And uh, then, what do we have in prior to the services? Yeah, 
Some, most of you said, some of you said meal, some of you said food. And uh, it doesn't matter which way you say it, it's free and it's going to be good. So come and we're going to enjoy that. It's a kind of uh, come as you would like to for any time between 6 and 6.45. of an army of ladies volunteered to help out with that. If you have any questions about that, you can see Miss Kelly Honey. And we're really looking forward to that. Spring Revival is really pray for the meeting and let's be faithful to each night of it that God would bless in a very, very special way, all right? And then, of course, tonight, 6 o'clock, we're looking forward to that. We're going to be talking about uh, a life worth living, so you don't want to miss that tonight, 6 o'clock, for the message this evening. Tonight, I want to talk, or excuse me, this morning, I want to talk about this subject of a Christ-honoring church, a Christ-honoring church. Let's begin reading in Ephesians chapter 5, and we'll begin in verse number 21. And we'll read down through verse number 32, and um, I want you to give special attention. There's a lot in here, but I'm going to bring a couple points out, and I believe that the thought will be a blessing and encouragement to you this morning. Ephesians chapter 5, look with me in verse number 21. The Bible says, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. There's not a lot of fear of the Lord these days, and uh, if there was, there wouldn't be a lot of things uh, wrong, sinful things happening in the world today. and We've lost that. There needs to be a fear of God. And the church is to spearhead that, right? And uh, that reverence. It doesn't mean fear when the Bible says, I had an elderly man ask me about that some years ago, not this church, but and uh, he said, does that mean I'm supposed to be scared of the Lord? And I said, no, it means to respect him and reverence him as holy and righteous. And submitting yourselves one to another in fear of God this is not there's there's not a, this is not marriage counseling, but it would be very good to to get that from here the word of God. Wives submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as in the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. God uses the husband and wife relationship and the marriage relationship to illustrate the church. Okay, and we find here we're talking about the church this morning. And we find here that the Christ, Jesus Christ, is the head of the church. Verse 24, Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even, get this, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man yet ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. Uh, for we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife. And they too shall be one flesh. There's a lot to be said about that. That's for if you're a young couple, you need to really think about that. That's not the message. We don't have time for that. Maybe another time, but you really need to think about that if you're a young person and you have an inclination of getting married. Understand, okay? There's a lot in that verse, verse number 31. Okay? You leave your father and your mother, you go start your own home. Amen? You raise your own children. I realize everyone is not able to do that. And there was a time in my life when I live with my mom and dad as a married man, and it's just not the way God worked it out. It's just not the way God designed that. And I, my mom and dad is not here this morning. Uh, they're perhaps watching online, uh, but they're at the hospital with my sister, of course, but, um, but we're grateful for my mom and dad. And the greatest, the, the, I have a great relationship with my mom and dad. Most of you know that. Uh, my dad, sir, he's on a three-year term as one of our deacons. I love my mom and dad. But it just, it's just, it, you can't put two people in one home. It's just not the way it's supposed to be. It's not the way God set that up. And it uh, should be joined unto his wife, and they sh- two shall be one flesh. The joining of the husband and wife happens at marriage. Amen. Okay. All God's people said? Just make sure everybody's okay, okay? All right. Uh, look in verse 32. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Uh, Look in verse 33. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Now, let's pray, and then we'll have a song, and then we'll get into this uh, thought of a Christ-honoring church. And I believe it will be a blessing, as the Lord has been a blessing to me 
as he spoke to my heart already this week. Let's pray. Father, we love you today. Thank you for our church. I love these people. They are my family through Christ. We may not be brothers and sisters by blood, but yet through the blood of Christ, yet we are spiritual brothers and sisters. And Father, I thank God, I thank you for each one that you've put in my path. Each one, I could look around each face in this place, and I could say you've been a blessing to me. Your smile, your spirit, your, your, your presence, your blessing, your friendship, and we could go on and on. And Father, I thank you for this church. I think I look back over just the last couple of years, and I think back, and just two or three years ago, we had hardly any children. And now we're trying to figure out where to put them all. You've been so good to us. Father, you've been so you blessed in so many ways, and we want to make sure you get all the glory and the praise and thanksgiving for what you've done and what you're doing. And Father, we want this place to be a, a lighthouse, Father, in this community, in this region, Father, for people that are needing help. We want it to be, in, in, a, in one sense, a hospital for people that need strength and need help. And Father, we also, in one sense, want it to be an army camp of soldiers, of godly men and women who are standing for the cause of Christ. Father, I pray that you would use me for just a few moments to be a blessing to your people. You know my heart. I so desire to be a blessing. And I pray that you would help us to be hungry for your word this morning. And Father, if there's someone that's not saved, may they trust Christ as their Savior this morning. And Father, if they are people here, that uh, those of us who are saved, may we uh, receive your word, implement it, apply it and grow spiritually. Thank you for the song now that we're about to hear. I pray that you would be honored and glorified through it and the message to follow in Jesus' name. Amen. i 
most wonderful, glorious. Oh, what a Savior is mine. Father, I want you to do that one one more time there if you would just do that last phrase or verse or whatever one more time raise your hand if you're thankful that you've got a great savior i'm grateful you know that's what we came here this morning to to worship him i want you to think about what he's singing worship along from your heart today. relieving my Savior is mine, giving me courage to do and to dare. Oh, what a Savior is mine. Oh, what a Savior. That doesn't do something for you. Ah, you're you're going to be in bad shape, and uh, that should thrill your heart. Uh, our life is all about the Lord Jesus and what a Savior He is to us. And I'm grateful for that. Uh, if someone had asked would ask you in an interview or maybe just at your home, uh, what does the word church mean? What does church mean? Now. There's probably a lot of reasons the Lord has pressed upon my heart this message this morning. I don't know all the reasons, so just try to simply be mindful of the Holy Spirit. Uh, but uh, there's a lot of different definitions I think you would get with church. There's so many different churches, would you agree? All over the world, really. And uh, some of them, uh, I'm, a, I, I'm wondering if we should really and, and legitimately call them a church because of what they practice, teach, etc. Because it may just possibly be a group or a concert of some sort, really. Uh, but what is a church? And uh, you say, well, Pastor, I don't know. I, I want to hear uh, what you or what the Bible, what God says about the church. And I'm glad you asked that because we're going to talk to you about that. And uh, for many, of course, church is very important. My grandma, we, she did the breakfast this morning over in the activity center for those who took advantage of that. And she was just telling me just briefly, she said, I don't know what people would do if they did not have a church. And, uh, and, and referring to ours as well. But there's many good churches just like ours all over the country meeting this morning and really all over the world in other countries at different times, of course. And, but for many, the church is very important, but we need to understand the different characteristics of the church because that will help you uh, become more grounded in, in understanding what the church truly is and, and how it affects us, how it uh, is special to our lives, and just really so many different things. And you'll see that in just a moment, I believe. The church, uh, I've said this phrase many times, and many of you have heard this, not all, but the church is not simply a building. Now, I refer to that as uh, this a church. I refer to this property, campus, this building as a church. When I leave my house uh, and, and make that long 45-second drive and uh, to church from my home, uh, I will say, uh, sweetheart, I'll see you in just a few minutes. I'm going to go up to the 
church, okay? And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing wrong saying I'm going to church. But the church is not a building. It is not the block. It is not the mortar. It is not the sheetrock. It is not the carpet. It is not the pews or the instruments that, that, have, that are, are in, in the building. But a church is a group of believers that have met together. Look with me in verse 25 of again, Ephesians 5, 25. Husbands, love your wives. Notice, even as Christ... Also loved the what? The church and gave himself for it. So God, Jesus did not give himself for a building. And that's referring to the cross, giving himself sacrificially on the cross at Calvary 2,000 years ago. And he wasn't talking about giving himself for brick, mortar, for carpet. No, he gave himself for God so loved the world. He gave himself for you. He gave himself for me, for every person that's ever been born, Jesus gave himself upon the cross and died for you and in your place took his, your sin upon himself who knew no sin. He did that for you. So Jesus died for the church. Uh, churches in many times in the New Testament, I was looking at as I was studying this, many times uh, were in the home. Uh, many times the apostle Paul would say, greet the church that is in your house. And I'm paraphrasing, many churches, and someone, if I'm not mistaken, told me that this church, Temple Baptist, back in the, uh, perhaps, I think the 60s, was established perhaps even in a home. And many churches established in a home. Now, all churches are not the same. Uh, just because it has the name church doesn't mean that that particular assembly, number one, is even saved uh, we are we are getting we're we're seeing prophecy fulfilled in in this day and age which we're living in where there is a a, 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 a turning away from the truth and uh, and and having itching ears in other words just hearing what makes me feel good and makes me feel confident in myself and there, that is so contrary to scripture and to what God instituted the church for. Uh, that is not what it's about, but we're in that age. So a church, a Christ-honoring church, is, is a group of believers that are meet together, and it is following Scripture. So a church is not just a building, and it's not just a, a group of people that are saying, quote-unquote, we're going to worship. Uh, it needs to be Scripture. Would you agree with that? And I want to be a part, and thank God I am, and get to be every service, and uh, to, uh, most every service, and uh, get to be a part of Temple Baptist Church, which I believe is a Christ-honoring church. And so, but I just want to reinforce some things we believe from the Word of God. This is not from our bylaws. This is not from Pastor Bowles. Uh, my wife didn't even insert this in the message. It's just simply from the Word of God. Now, uh, let's look at a couple things, what a Christ-honoring church is. Number one, if you're taking notes, I want you to notice uh, in, this, in this point or outline, whatever you want to call it, the purchase of the church. Look back with me again in verse 25, and we're going to emphasize the, the phrase where it says, and gave himself for it. Jesus gave everything. Jesus gave himself for the church, for you and I. Those who have received him as our personal savior have been saved by his grace. Jesus purchased that church. The book of Acts gives reference to the fact that Jesus has purchased the church with his precious blood, the precious blood of Christ. And so we understand that Jesus has purchased the church. He bought it with his blood. The Bible teaches us in the New Testament that we are bought with a price. That price was the price that Jesus paid. His life that he sacrificed for us at Calvary. So just like everything comes with the price. There's nothing free. Nothing, right? No, nothing. I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe a food sample at Sam's. Okay. But that is just, you understand that's an enticement to buy the product. You understand, okay? So there's a scheme behind that. They're just not giving you free stuff and hoping that because of your well-being, they're trying to make some money somewhere by giving you these samples. Nothing is free. Hardly anything is free. And salvation is free to you and I, but it costs Jesus everything. Every, he cost him his life. He freely gave it. But he purchased the church. We are bought with the precious blood of Christ. 
Now I want you to notice the second point, and that is the preciousness of the church. Verse number 25, husbands love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, if I make a large purchase concerning a home, concerning a vehicle, that possession becomes mine and it becomes very precious to me because of the investment that I've made in it. My home is very precious to me. I have a large investment, or Truist has a large investment in my home. But uh, I have an investment in that home. I want to take care of it. I want to take care of it. I, I, want, I try to teach my kids to take care of it. You say, how's that going? It's not going very well. But we're working on a daily basis. Uh, if you're here for the first time, I have three children. Ten, seven, and four. And uh, we're doing our best. And we're getting there by the Lord's help. And, uh, but I, we, we've purchased that home. It's ours. And so we are doing our best to take care of that home. We have vehicles by God's blessings. And I want to take care of those vehicles. I want to take care of what God has given me. And again, because the church has been purchased uh, through Jesus and his sacrificial uh, cost that he paid at Calvary, the church, I want you to know, is very precious to Jesus. Now again, remember, we're not talking about the building. We're not talking about the mortar and the block this morning. We're talking about you and me. God, you are very precious to the Lord. Why? Because he gave himself for you. The church should be very precious to you and I. It is a very precious thing. Can I say that we should be very grateful for the church? Very grateful for the church. Now listen, and again, we're not talking about being... Now listen... There's no person in here, I don't think, that's more grateful for this campus than I am. I love it. God has blessed us. And I was thinking about a while ago, uh, God has blessed us in the last two or three years, been able to update and remodel almost every single room in this, on this campus. And I'm grateful for that. And uh, thank the Lord for that. And, and, but I'm not, and I'm so grateful for the campus. I'm thankful for the beautiful landscaping that Greg Wellerman does such a great job with. I'm thankful for just so many different, our cleaning staff, who, uh, Ms. Hanpoff, who keeps it so spotless around here. What a blessing. Uh, but I'm talking about the church. I'm talking about you and I. How much, how grateful we should be for one another. Grateful. I'm glad to be a part of a ministry that is grateful for the one another. We should be gracious to one another. Again, we're talking about the church. We're talking about, uh, and, and of course, Temple Baptist Church. I'm, you know, you can narrow it down. In the book of Revelation, there's independent churches. Jesus Christ, in the first couple chapters of Revelation, chapters 2, 3, and 4, Jesus, or, ch or excuse me, chapters 2 and 3, uh, Jesus uh, 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 specifically recognizes the church at Thyatira, the church at Pergamos, the church at Laodicea, all these different individual independent churches. They were independent. They had their own pastor, which is the messenger or the angel of that church. And Jesus uh, addresses each one of these independent churches. And so I believe that we scripturally want to be an independent church and go off solely off the authority of the word of God. Amen. Uh, and so uh, we are grateful for that church, but we should be gracious uh, to the church. Now, again, we're not talking about being gracious to the property. We're talking about being gracious to one another. All throughout the Word of God, all throughout the Word of God, we find be kind to one another. Let your speech be seasoned with salt uh, and, and being kind one to another and loving one another and bearing one another's burdens and weeping when others weep and laughing when others why, uh, laugh. Why? Because... We are the church. We are a family joined together through the blood of Jesus Christ. And listen to me. I, yes, I am precious in the sight of God, but so is Bubba. Yeah. You say, who's Bubba? That guy right over there. <laughs> Some of you know him as David. I've always known him as Bub. Bubba. All right. I heard one pastor preaching not too uh, several, several years ago. He said, and he pastors in Tennessee. And he said, listen, he said, you don't say Bubba in my church. He don't, he, he said, listen, he said, you don't say, if, he says, you don't call your son Bubba. He said, if he said, you open up the truck door and you say, hop in Bubba. He said, you'll have seven or eight kids jump in your truck. <laughs> but we've only got one Bubba. All right. <laughs> Bubba is just as precious. David is just as precious in the sight of God as I am. The Bible teaches us there's no respecter of persons with God. In other words, he doesn't respect Nikisha any more than he does my wife. And he doesn't respect... You say, wait a minute, your wife is the pastor's wife. Well, this friend, that's not an office of the church or position of leadership. She's my wife. 
And, and God, Nikisha, and I'm just using Nikisha as an example, Nikisha is just as precious to God as my wife. My wife is just as precious as Jan Lewis and, and Miss uh, uh, Chastity and Miss Martha Church and so many others. God is, we are so precious one to another, and we need to understand that. That God loves so and so just as much and equal as he loves me. We're to be gracious to one another. We should never take the church for granted. We're talking about the preciousness of the church in general, but really and specifically uh, Temple Baptist Church. It, it, we are to be grateful for it. We're to be gracious one to another, and we should never take it for granted. Amen. Amen. Listen, in China today, or yesterday, whenever, the time change is different, it's different, of course. In China, they have to meet underground. When, if we were to have a missionary from China, we wouldn't be able to air, perhaps, things on social media. We wouldn't be able to air our services live because of the, the government found out they could be in jeopardy of their lives. We're so blessed. Don't ever take the church for granted. Don't ever take the spirit of Christ-like love of Temple Baptist Church for granted. You've heard preachers say it. It's not like this everywhere. We're so blessed. Don't take it for granted. Number three, quickly, not only the purchase of the church, the preciousness of the church, but number three, the power of the church. And I'm going to read to you, you can turn if you like, but in Acts chapter 2, 1 through 6, we find that the day of Pentecost came. And the day of Pentecost was a big day for the early church. And it says in verse 1 of chapter 2 of Acts, and when the day of Pentecost was full to come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude who came together were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And we understand this was a specific time that God used the, the tongues in the early church, not for, not for today's ministry, but uh, for getting the church off the ground. It was brand new then, you understand. But I want you to understand and realize that the church was established prior to this. And Jesus said in Matthew chapter 16, verse number 18, he said unto Peter, he said, upon this rock I will build my church. I always like to uh, look at that and kind of picture that in my mind of Peter and Jesus talking. And Peter looking at Peter and pointing to himself and says to Peter, Thou art Peter, upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The church was established by Jesus Christ. The disciples were already assembled together in one accord before the power of God and the Holy Ghost came upon them on the day of Pentecost. And so the church was established by Jesus Christ during his earthly ministry. There's about 120 meeting there. And then on the day of Pentecost, bam, the church exploded to instantly 3,000 people were saved and baptized on that day that God used miraculously to get the church off the ground. And the church was empowered on the day of Pentecost. So the church was established by Jesus Christ. But the church was empowered and given the power of God on this day of Pentecost in the early church age in Acts chapter number 2. And today, although we do not speak in tongues and although we do not have revelation because we have all the revelation we need in this book right here, amen? But we still are in need of the power of God in our churches. I'm convinced that we substitute that. We substitute the power of God through uh, music that stirs our emotions and through different ministries that, 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 that point uh, and, and try to, uh, uh, to stir our emotions, the emotional and the mental aspect of our lives. But friend, we need the power of God. And Jesus very clearly said, uh, I am the vine and you are the branches. Without me, you can do nothing. And can I be the first one to say, the pastor of Temple Baptist Church, we need the Lord. Amen. And listen, we need one another. But more than that, we need the power of God. We need the power of God. Without him, we can do nothing. We are powerless. Listen, I can't save you, but God has the power to. I can't save your marriage, but God has the power to. I can't encourage you, but God has the power to reach in there and your heart stir your heart. 
God has the power and the ability to, to reach in your heart by the Holy Spirit of God and squeeze your heart like he did when I was 19 and, and say, boy, you better get right with me. God has the power to convict. God has the power to encourage. I don't know how, long, how many times that I have walked in a church service. Maybe it was Temple Baptist Church and maybe it was another church and I'd walked in. I was discouraged. I was disheartened. And somebody came up to me and smiled and shake my hand and says, good to see you, Pastor. It's good to see you, Brother Bowles. And well, how that encouraged me so very much. But there's nothing that can replace the moving of the Holy Spirit of God when I've sat in a service and maybe a song like Brother Holly, and I'm so thankful that I, I, I sat down a couple weeks ago and taught him how to sing that song. <laughs> and if you know my singing ability, you know that's, a, that's not quite true. Because I can't sing a lick. I've got kicked out of so many choirs, it's not even funny. But anyway, I'm joking, of course. But that song and, and how God uses that, not to stir my emotions... Not to get me all jiggly and wiggly. But to stir my heart. And to encourage me. And to refocus my mind that this thing is about Jesus. It's not about me. We need the power of God to convict in our services. We need the power of God to challenge us to do more. Not less. We need the power of God to comfort and, and also to conform us to the image of Jesus Christ. You understand that it is not in a man that Brother Cottle, when he comes to preach for us, listen, you're in for a treat. He is a man of God. And I guarantee you he will be praying and seeking that God will use him and the power of God be upon him. But I assure you that Dr. Cottle cannot give revival as much as he desires it. And I promise you that Pastor Pastor Bowles cannot stir you to revival and I cannot make you witness to people and I cannot make you live right. But listen, the power of God that works in our hearts and lives through services and through ministries and through his word and through the songs that he uses can stir our hearts. Man, we need the power of God. It's present. We need that. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I'll be in the midst. The power of the church. Notice number four, the purity of the church. Some of you are thinking, I need to get out for lunch. You just need to forget about that right now. <laughs> Number four, quickly, quickly. I'll, be, I'll hasten on. Number four, the purity of the church. Notice again verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. You know how you're in a, you, you know how you know you're in a spiritual a church? When you can read, husbands love your wives and all the women don't say, amen. You know you're in a spiritual church. God bless you, ladies. <laughs> verse 26, that he might sanctify. Listen to this. Verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Now, some may say that's talking about salvation. And I could understand that. But we're going to take this perspective up that it's referring to um, the fact that he's already purchased it and he's sanctified or separating it to more so to himself. That he might present it to himself a what kind of church? A glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. The purity of the church is accomplished through two things. One, the purity of the church is accomplished through separation. Through separation. Again, again it says, verse 27, that God, is, or verse 26 and 27, he might sanctify it or to make it holy, to separate it from the world's philosophy and mindset of a lost man's viewpoint of life. To sanctify it, to cleanse it. He wants it to be a glorious church. He doesn't want it to have spots of sin. He wants it to be without wrinkles. He wants it to be holy. And without blemish. It corresponds with the fact that he has called each one of us as Christian individuals to live a life that is holy, like unto Jesus. And the church is not to have contaminants of sin uh, of the world. Amongst the church, there should be a reverence. I'm reminded of Psalms 29 too. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord. Get it in the beauty of holiness. In the beauty of holiness. We've lost that. In this world that we're living in, we have so we have poured in the world's philosophy, music, style, and everything into this blender that we're also trying to pour in Bible principles, and we're trying to blend it together. And God said, "Uh-uh, that's not what I've told you to do. I want the church to be set apart 
to be sanctified without spot of, of, of sin in a world that it... Listen, if I act like a lost person and I have the same mindset and the viewpoints of a lost person, then how can others see Christ within my life? I realize we're not perfect, but we ought to strive to be holy like unto Jesus. And the, the, amongst the church, there should be a sense of reverence unto the Lord. This is a precious place. This is a place that Jesus has purchased with his own blood. It ought to be looked at with reverence. Amongst the church, there should be a sense of respect. Respect. Amongst the church, there should be a sense of representation. The fact that we represent the Lord Jesus Christ. The purity of the church, quickly, I'm hurrying. The purity of the church is not only accomplished through separation of the world, as we find in Ephesians 5, 26 and 27, but the purity of the church is to be accomplished through Scripture. It says in verse 26 that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the Word of God. That The Word of God is... It, when it's preached and taught and implemented and applied in a local church assembly like Temple Baptist Church, that is when it is honoring to the Lord. And God says, uh, I want you to live by the word of God, not just pulling things out. Uh, listen, when I sit in my office, I'm not sitting there and looking at and thinking, you know what, <laughs> I really want to, you know, you know kind of get popular here. I want to kind of get big. I believe God's blessing tremendously. We're grateful for that. But that, that is not the motive of the ministry. The ministry is to preach what Paul told Timothy. Preach the word. Preach the word. And let God work in hearts and minds through that. Notice quickly, I've got to hurry. Number five. <laughs> I've got another hour to go. But Now, I'm not going to keep you that long, okay? But number five, quickly, notice this. The purpose of the church if you want, you can turn to just one page over. Ephesians chapter 4, verses number 11 through 16. We find the purpose of the church here outlined very clearly. The purpose of the church in verses 11 through 16 of Ephesians chapter 4, it's for the equipping of the saints. It says for the perfecting of the saints. You know, listen, I am to become more perfect and more like unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Not like to myself and not like somebody else, but become more like Christ. And the church is, uh, God has ordained pastors and, uh, and uh, apostles, of course, during that age. And prophets and evangelists and teachers. Why? To equip the saints, to give us what we need to live a life that is Christ-honoring. And another purpose of the church is to evangelize the lost. Listen, I think we ought to have a, a very strategic plan to reach the world with the gospel, don't you? We need to make sure that we're going to house to house as uh, the Bible teaches us, that Paul taught the others in his ministry, that we're to go from house to house to make sure that everyone hears the gospel of Jesus Christ, that no one is left out. And where does that strategic plan come from? It comes from the local church. And you say, well, I have a burden for so-and-so, I have a burden for so-and-so. Great, wonderful. You're doing exactly what you should be doing. But let's have a strategic plan to make sure we get everybody. And then I want you to notice it is also for the purpose of the church is for encouraging the saints, the edifying of the body of Christ. Number six. Number six. I wish I had more time here. Number six, the prospering of the church. I'm almost done. Matthew chapter 16, verse number 18. The Bible says this, And I say also unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The prospering church, the prospering of the church. The church will be built, and it will be built by Jesus. Amen. And except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Right. Listen, you say, I want our church to grow. Well, hey, get some outreach cards. When you go out, tell people about Jesus. That's how the church is to grow. And God saves people, and God helps them grow, and he establishes them through the preaching of the word of God. It is not in me to build Temple Baptist Church. I look and I think, wow, look what the Lord has done. And we need to have that spirit, that mentality. Because it's not in me, it's not in you. It's not in the choir, it's not in the deacons. It's not in this, the, the, the volunteers, uh, children's staff. It is in the Lord. The church will be built by Jesus. He says, I will build my church. And the church will withstand. Look in verse number 18. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Come here for a minute. If you're in a Christ-honoring church, Jesus told us the gates of hell will come against it. Sometimes I wonder 
when everything's going so smooth around this place, around this campus, sometimes when everything's going smooth, I'll be honest with you, sometimes I wonder, Lord, are we pleasing you? Because, so, because it's a regular thing. The devil hates a Christ-honoring body of believers that are strategically trying to be a light in this world and reaching the lost for Christ. To equip the saints to encourage believers to stand for what is right and based upon the truth of the word of God. And you mark, if you think the devil is just going to sit in hell with his arms crossed and, and kind of think, well... Okay, now he's going to do it. Jesus told us, listen to what he said again, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, Jesus said the gates of hell would not prevail against it. But Jesus didn't say he's not going to fight because he will. Young married couple, we have so many young couples in our church and they're on spiritual fire for the Lord. I see that. You don't have to tell me. I see that. I'm, I'm encouraged by you and your spirit, your, your faithfulness on Sunday night, Wednesday night. You're trying to keep those babies in church. God bless you. I know that's hard. <laughs> it still is. My wife's going to get me after church. She's going to say, you have no clue what it means to go to church with three kids. I always go prior to turn on the lights and all of that. My wife is the one who wrangles them. But it, it is. It's challenging. I understand that. I know, but God bless you. And the devil's going to fight you. He's going he's to distract you. He's going to discourage you in any way that he can. Most of the time, it's ways that we don't expect. The devil will hinder a church that is Christ-honoring. And so listen, uh, one of the marks of a Christ-honoring church is the devil will fight it, but he will, not, he will not prevail against it. I'm glad greater is he than he that is he that is in the world. And I'm glad every once in a while I, I, I'll tell my wife, I can't, but man, the devil's really fighting this area. And you know what my wife will say? Well, God's getting ready to bless again. I'm so excited about what God is doing, but the devil will fight it. I promise you that. And I'm just trying to prepare you, help you, encourage you with that. Notice the last thing, and I'm done. And all God's people said... That's a trick. 40% of you failed right there. I still love you. Number seven. Number seven. The potential of the church. Now I'm going to leave you with this verse. Philippians 1.27. Only let your conversation, your behavior, be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs. That ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Listen, when a church strives together for one purpose, and that is for the gospel and the sake of the gospel. When a church strives together, let me tell you something. That church's potential of the blessings and the power of God is really unstoppable. God can bless in so many ways when a church, and I'm so thankful, listen. I am so grateful to be a part of Temple Baptist Church. Listen, I can't hardly stand it. I, I love this place. I love you so much. <laughs> I pastored prior to this. I, I clo I'm closing. Don't close your Bibles, though, but I'm done. I pastored prior to this. And the church, it was, it was a harder pastor. It was, none of you would know where it's at. It's five hours from here in another state. Um, and I pastored for a couple of years, and, and uh, I, I felt like the Lord wanted me to, to step out and, and uh, to, to resign the ministry there. And I told my wife, I said, I want to get somewhere where I can stay, and I don't want to go to, from church to church. And I know sometimes God does that. But I said, I wanna, my heart is just to get in a place, and I can be 80 years old and still pastor. You know? And I want to be here the rest of my life. And, and when we came here, Almost six years ago, that's, that's the commitment that I gave to you, that I was going to be here uh, for, for the rest of my life, a lifetime commitment. And we still have that, by God's grace, and I'm grateful for that. And I'm looking forward to what God is going to do in the years to come. But I remember being in the church, and we had some hardships. It was a very small church. And uh, we, we, we came home a lot of times disheartened and so forth. And, and, uh, there was some, and I would not, uh, because we have some people from that ministry that still watch and look in on this ministry and very encouraging 
but I would not say a lot of things, but I will say we were discouraged a lot of times. And my wife looks at me sometimes, even now, and sometimes, sometimes I'll have a discouraging day. And my wife will say, listen, you remember just a few years ago, we dreamed about a church like Temple Baptist Church. And God has blessed so much. We're so grateful. And I just want to encourage you just to keep on the gas pedal. And to just keep on keeping on. Now, I close with this. You say, you've already closed. Well, this is the second part of the closing. <laughs> this is where we latch it. Instrumentalists, you come. You come. Let's go ahead and bow our heads and close our eyes. I want to ask you this question. And I really want you to listen. I really want you to listen. Are you a part of the church? Now, I am not talking about Temple Baptist Church. Now, if you are here, if you're as a member of Temple Baptist Church or non-member, we consider you a church, part of the church family, but I'm not talking about that. The church is the body of Christ. It is a body of believers. It is a flock that is guided by the shepherd, Jesus Christ. And let me ask you a question. Are you in that? Are you a part of the body of Christ? Are you in the church? You say, Pastor, I don't know. I don't know. You're kind of speaking for, foreign to me right now. Are you saved? Because the very moment that you trust Christ as your Savior, you're in the church. You're a part of the body of Christ because he purchased you with his own blood. You belong. We belong to him. Again, are you part of the church? Have you been saved? Are you a part of the body of Christ? I'm not talking about membership. I'm talking about salvation. And if you're here this morning, you say, Pastor, I'm not ashamed and I know that I've been saved. Would you slip up your hand right now? Say, Pastor, I know I'm part of the body of Christ, part of the church. I'm grateful for that. You can put your hands down. I appreciate that testimony. I wonder if you're here this morning and everybody has their head bowed and eyes are closed. And as the instrumentalists can uh, play very softly, I want to ask you a question this morning to you that are not part. Would you be honest with me and say, Pastor, between me and you and the Lord right now, I know I'm not saved. I'm not a part of the church, the body of Christ, but I long to be. I would love to be part of the body of Christ, the church. I want to be saved. I, I, I know that that's the only way to go to heaven. Would you raise your hand right now? I'd love to pray for you in my private time with the Lord. Would you raise your hand right now and put it right back down? Anybody like that this evening, this morning, Pastor, pray for me that I would trust Christ as my Savior. I wonder if you're here this morning, perhaps you just want to come around this altar and you say, Lord, I want to thank you for the church. Lord, I want to thank you for Temple Baptist Church. Lord, I want to thank you for a place that we can worship. I want to thank you, Lord, for a place that is striving to be scriptural. Lord, I want to thank you for a body of believers that have a sweet spirit. Lord, I want to thank you for a place where I can have my kids involved in a class where they can learn not just what's going on around the world, but they can learn about the, the gospel. They can learn about the doctrines of the Word of God. Lord, I'm thankful. Brother Holly's going to sing, and as he sings, I want to encourage you to come, as many have already. Let's stand together with our heads bowed and eyes are closed. Would you come this morning, whatever the need is? I hear the Savior say, my strength indeed is small, child of weakness, watch and pray, find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe, sin had left a crimson stain. Washed Let's it sing, white as together. snow. Give it all you've got. Lord, now indeed I find Think about it. thy power and mine alone can change the leper spots and melt the heart of stone. Think about it. Jesus paid. One more verse, give it all you've got. For nothing could have I, whereby thy grace.
grace to claim. I'll wash my garments white in the blood of Calvary. Sing it all you got today. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. Thank you for the church. We thank you that you purchased the church with your blood. We thank you that you have given anyone and everyone the opportunity to be a part of the body of Christ, the church. We're thankful for churches, assemblies like this one all across the world that I can't go be a part of a church in Nevada or California or New York. But I can be here as close to where I live. And I thank you for setting that up like that. Thank you for giving us pastors, evangelists, and teachers, missionaries through the local church. And I pray that you continue to bless. We give you all the glory and thanksgiving for what you've done in this place. We ask you to continue to bless in a powerful way. Oh, we need you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated this morning. I want to say... Uh, if you're here and you have a need in your life, if you need to be saved, if you need to talk to the need to talk to the pastor, the pastor's wife, in any way, you know we're always available. Okay, so we want to make sure that you're aware of that. All right, we have a couple of video announcements. Listen carefully. There's a lot going on, and so listen carefully, and then we'll be dismissed this morning. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today here at Temple Baptist Church. We would like to remind you of a few upcoming events. Each weekday evening next week prior to our spring revival, there will be a free and delicious meal provided in our Heritage Hall for our entire church family. Pastor Bowles would like to encourage each family to join us for this great time of fellowship anytime between 6 to 6.45 p.m. We are really looking forward to our upcoming Spring Revival that will begin next Sunday, March 26th and go through Wednesday, March 29th. We are very excited to have Dr. Scott Caudill preaching for us as well as special music each night. Let's begin making plans to attend each service and praying now that God will do great things during this upcoming week. Our annual Easter Spectacular is coming up on Saturday, April 8th. We are very excited about this fun and exciting event for the kids of our church and community. Make plans to join us between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. here on our church campus for a large Easter egg hunt, inflatables, face painting, free food, and concessions. If you would like to be a part of helping in this event, we are now taking candy donations in the bin located near the media desk. The month of March has been set aside as Pastor's Wife Appreciation Month. Tonight, after our evening service, we will have a celebration in Heritage Hall for our pastor's wife, Mrs. Hannah Bowles. Make plans to join us for this special time as we show our appreciation to this special lady. We are very excited about our upcoming Easter service on Sunday, April 9th at 11 a.m. Make plans to be with us for this special Sunday as we celebrate the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you once again for joining us today. We would like to invite each family to join us again this evening at 6 o'clock p.m. for special singing and a helpful message from God's Word. All right, let's all stand together once again. If you're glad you came to church this morning, would you say amen? amen. I love you. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Don't forget about service tonight. Again, uh, new members class, 5 o'clock. Uh, keep that in mind if you will. And uh, choir practice, 5 o'clock as well. And, uh, and then again, service tonight, 6 o'clock, we'll be talking about a life worth living. Don't miss that uh, tonight out of the Gospel of Mark, all right? I love you. God bless you. You're dismissed. Mm -hmm.